He's opening. He's opening. Hello. Come out. That won't hurt you. So I'd like to introduce you guys to the cabbage worm. A destructive little bugger which will destroy all of your brassica family plants which means that they'll destroy your broccoli. Your kale. And your cabbages. Now this guy here is about a medium sized one. They can be anything from a half inch to an inch long. And nice little fat green guys like that. To small little teeny ones that could fit underneath your thumbnail that you can barely see and are maybe an eighth of an inch long and you know a width of a couple strands of hair. And they can be this color green and they can also be a yellowish color with a lot of little like black lines in them. Now for these brassicas, I could come out here with some sort of a neem oil or vegetable oil mixture like I did for the potatoes because I'm really trying to keep any chemical herbicides. Oh, I actually have a flower on my onion starting. Look at that. Um, I'm trying to avoid any chemical pesticides or chemical herbicides in this garden keep it as healthy and organic as I possibly can and the oils all that does is act as a smothering agent so that's why I like using them for the potato beetles because it gets rid of all that larva that sometimes you don't even see it happening but you do you have to go through you have to spray the tops of the leaves the bottoms of the leaves all that good stuff and since I'm not worried about what these guys are laying and I'm more just worried about killing the worms that are there it's going to take the same amount of time for me to go through and lift each leaf and just look for the worms and squish them with my fingers as it would to sit there and take the sprayer and get all around each individual leaf. It doesn't act as a preventative. It's not going to repel anything. All it's going to do is kill what's already there. So I'm just sticking with what I've been doing. And I'm going around to each and every plant and looking on the top of the leaf and then going ahead and looking on the bottom of the leaf. This has actually been working. I am keeping them at bay. I am being very, very digital. Oh, there is a massive one right in front of me. So you can barely see them because they love hiding along the stems. Look at the size of him. Little bugger. So all I've been doing is taking them off and squishing them and getting rid of those. The big ones tend to be on the tops of the leaves. The little tiny ones like to hide underneath the leaves. And there's none here now, thank goodness, because I've been going at it, except for the ones that you don't see. And they really like to hide right along the veins. They blend in really, really well. So you gotta be really diligent about sitting there and going around and checking underneath each one. Um, this seems to be working to keep them at bay as long as I really stick to it. Um, I showed you guys about the worst of the damage. The kale's doing okay. I had seen some on it and I pulled them off. The broccoli, the main one that they're attacking is the one broccoli that I have that's actually creating a head. And you could see along the edge with the yellow where they were eating the broccoli head, but it seems to be doing okay. Because what will happen is you'll go and you'll pick that broccoli head and they'll actually be all inside of it, eating it from the inside out. But I think I'm keeping them off of that, fingers crossed. And then with my cabbage, they're not attacking the purple cabbage as much as they are attacking the savoy cabbage. What I showed you before was the worst of it. Um, the rest of the savoy is doing okay. But where they really like to hide, as you can see, I'll find one of the best ones I can to show you here. I know the uh, purple cabbage is doing really well. Here we go. You can see how cabbage grows here and the leaves start forming that tight ball like what you buy at the store and they'll actually you can keep pulling that ball back I'm hoping there's none in there I haven't checked it yet as far as you can without actually damaging the head you just kind of pull the leaves back a little bit and look inside and those really big I call them the mother worms I don't know if they're actually mothers or not but those really big ones that you just saw will love to be hiding down inside of there and there'll be a bunch of little baby ones all around the outer leaves eating it apart so we're dealing with that but see that there in good news we have oh there she is oh 
it. She goes flying around, being active. We have ladybugs all over our potatoes, which is awesome because I have actually also seen one or two. Oh, there she goes, trying to keep her on camera. We have also seen one or two potato beetles also hanging out on here. And ladybugs are an extremely beneficial insect. There's another one. Oh, took off. Went over to my tomatoes, actually. Beneficial insect to have in the garden. Where'd you go? There you go. Because they will go ahead and eat larvae and soft-bodied insects and aphids and all that good stuff, which means that these guys are probably eating the eggs and the larvae that the potato beetles are going ahead and trying to lay because that's where I've mainly seen them. Oh, there's another one. It is all over my potatoes. So that is really good news because my potatoes seem to still be doing very, very well, even though I've seen beetles here and there. So that is exciting. So thank you very much, little ladybugs. I appreciate your hard work. Thank you, thank you. There's a little butterfly over there pollinating. You can see it. This camera doesn't like to focus when I move. And in other good news, starting on Friday, we've been harvesting our green beans. Like right here, I've been pulling in at least a handful a day. A good size handful too, not a little handful. Like filling my hand up with them. These are the shortest green beans I've ever had for them to be really producing good fruits off of them. So you're getting a little blurry there. But I just keep on picking and picking. I do find that with green beans, the more you pick, the more you get. If you stop picking them and let those green beans get those really fat seeds inside that you don't want to eat, the plant finishes its cycle and it's done. So I just come out every single day and pick them at about the size that I just showed you. You don't have those bulging beans yet inside. You just have a nice crisp guy to eat and it is just the best feeling. I was telling my husband that yesterday, yesterday like midday I came out here, I picked a whole bunch of green beans and then I went over and picked a whole bunch of raspberries and I was just walking around the yard munching on green beans and raspberries. Weird combination I know but I was loving it and the weather was gorgeous and it's just the most amazing feeling. I am so excited that this is all starting to come in. It's so funny. A chicken just went sprinting by after something. I don't know what she's going after. But so that is really, really exciting. I'm so happy. Yeah, there's quite a few green. It's funny how fast they come in. Quite a few big green beans. So I'm definitely going to be picking some more of those. And I did notice too, I've got tons and tons of peas coming in now. But they're not quite ready to pick. Where'd she go? This was the very first pea that I ever saw come in, not that I've ever seen, that I ever saw come in this year, and it's just about pickable. I want to let it get a little fatter than that. I like those nice fat sugar peas. The rest of them are still very thin and just starting out. And so that'll be exciting. I think in the next day or two I'll probably be able to be harvesting some of these peas. Oh yeah. We've got some beautiful green peppers coming in. They're starting to fill out. We've got two on this plant alone. There and there. And it's got other flowers, so I'm hoping this is gonna keep producing peppers. It will make me so happy if I do. If you guys haven't heard me talk about it before, peppers every year. I always get green peppers, but I only only get like one or two odd shaped, not very good green peppers per plant. And they're doing so well this year with the soil. It's interesting the way things that have gone so well for me in years before are not doing so hot in the soil and other things that really usually don't go very well for me are going great. I hey, Chicky, Chicky, Chicky! What are you doing? Come to say hi? What's going on? Just chilling? Relaxing? Hanging out? Yeah? Hi! Hey, what did it do? Oh. Oh, I'm just saying hi and leaving. Okay, bye. So guys, you may have seen our video a bit back when, when we planted our fruit trees, and I had a feeling it was going to be a bad idea because the gypsy moth caterpillars were just destroying everything. And they did. They took a toll on our apple trees. The pear trees did okay, but I mean, they destroyed the apple trees. We came out here and they were like 
dead sticks. All the leaves were gone, everything else. I had started with that cayenne powder and it was keeping them away, but I made the lazy mistake where I did not keep up with it. It rained, I didn't come back out and put more cayenne on. And once the rain had washed that cayenne away, caterpillars just took the trees back over, completely decimated them. I mean, it looked like somebody broke a stick off a tree and came and stuck it in the ground in the middle of winter. But this is why I never give up on plants. Never give up on your plants. Just give them some time. Look at that. Apple tree. We had a fungus come in that kills off all those caterpillars when it gets really wet out. Which, I mean the poor species, but at the same time, thank goodness for our plants and trees. And look at that. Growing all its leaves back, coming right back to life for us. I'm so happy. We put little fences around the bottom because as you can see down there, which isn't surprising, um, I don't know if you can see there, something was munching on the bark. Not enough to kill the tree, but it was starting to. And all the trees, they're coming right back in. I'm so happy that they're coming back. I figured they would come back at least next year. Well, I hoped so, but I mean, they're already back this year. So I'm so happy about that. So yay, fruit trees. And so those pumpkins that I transplanted from my compost, these are the ones that I planted from seeds. Originally I'd planted six and immediately was like, nope, they all died. Not happening. They did not like it. But I have one here of the six. If you see that little green leaf in there, it's actually coming back. It's perking back up and trying to grow again. And then I had one other one that also came back to life. You can see right here the original leaf that completely died. I kind of have to pull that off. That's crispy and totally dead. But then one of the other leaves that was all wilted over came back and it's starting to grow a new leaf down there. So that did, I mean, out of the six of them, only two of them managed to make it, but they're coming back, so no harm done. And I don't know if this is silly or not. This is why I want to ask your guys' opinion here is as a hobby I do amateur photography I just have a lot of fun with it and do it as a hobby all those pictures that you always see at the beginning and ends of my videos and stuff those are all some pictures that I've taken so I was thinking about sharing some of the ones that I take with you guys during each video I usually take at least a couple pictures a day and since I'm putting out videos almost every day I thought that maybe I'd go ahead and share some of those at the end of each video so if you guys like that kind of thing let me know if you say yeah I'm not really that interested just let me know I won't bother doing it but I appreciate your guys's opinion and your support but otherwise I will see you guys on the next one that's it for today I love you all God bless enjoy the rest of your day and bye, -bye.